Hello, it's Greg Grissom, guys. We're back. We hope you're having a happy day where we're listening to this audio content from. As always, I'd like to thank you for your continued support of Greg Grissom, guys, in social media and writing efforts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is episode 033 of the Greg Grissom, guys, and definitely not a podcast show. A light and fluffy look at social media, Japan, Japanese food, expat life, and life in general. As always, your retweets of this and all the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful content that we actively tweet and retweet out on Craig Hoffman 11 on Twitter is appreciated. Thank you in advance for helping us get the good, good, good word out about Greg Grizzle and Gaijin. Welcome back. Another good show, I hope. Talking about how to get your core more active on your behalf. It's one thing to have numbers of followers, and if you go on Twitter, you can see people with literally hundreds of thousands of followers. But a funny thing happens with the vast majority of them. If you look at what they're tweeting out, there's very little interaction. Certainly not to the level that you might think. And in contrast, you can see several Twitter people with a much smaller following that when they tweet something out, almost all of their core is engaging that or interacting. And I'm setting aside the famous people and the people who pay money to promote things and the people who have professionals behind them. I'm talking about regular, hardworking, blue collar, virtual content creators. And you know, I spend a lot of time researching and studying such things and I wonder why someone with 30,000 followers gets three likes on a tweet and someone with 300 followers gets 50. And when you look really close, you see that the people who get more interaction generally are interacting engager to engager. And that seems like a simple thing. Someone reaches out to you, they comment, they like, they retweet you, they comment on something that you did, whether that's a YouTube vlog or a blog that you have written. And you'd think, hey, thanks for taking the time to notice me. And many contract or rather content creators do that. But surprisingly, in my experience on social media, many people simply take for granted that somebody has liked, retweeted, or engaged their content. And I'm sure I have been guilty of that especially as I got bigger, it's hard to catch everybody who likes and retweets and engages your content. That's just the way it goes. But the people especially who do that again and again and again and again, I make effort and time to acknowledge their time and effort. Two reasons. One, they appreciate it. And two, other people who are not in that perhaps super fan category are watching closely how I treat those people. That's also true in real life. You have to respect what you do on social media and you have to more importantly respect what people say and do in response to that. Positively, of course. The trolls and the naysayers and the negative people, personally, I don't waste any time engaging. And I know there are people that say you should and and try to make a friend and make nice. Turn the other cheek, as my beloved mother would say. I don't, if you say something not negative on my social media or are snarky or disrespectful to me or an engager or something I have, retweeted, I just block and and go on with my day. Life is a little short for such trivial matters and drama. I certainly don't have that in my real life and I'm not going to do that in my virtual life. I talk a lot about the 80-20. You know, I I meet a lot of great bloggers and vloggers and, and people who really, really work hard. But I say it all the time, 80% of content creation is marketing. And then as my great, great, great mentor, friend, and family member, 
from now marketing, Jessica would say, it's about relationships and people. So is real life, by the way. And I take a genuine interest in trying to develop as many of those relationships within reason as I can on Twitter, social media, blogging, and in the writing communities. And in 2019, I've talked about being the bar in 2019. And by that, I mean that I show by example and lead by example to my gray, grizzled, and gaijin engagers. When somebody engages me, likes, retweets, comments, I'm warp speed within reason. Again, I have a life, a job, and responsibilities. And getting back to that person, and again, I'm sure I miss people. I get a lot of email, I get a lot of interaction, and that's a credit to the hard work that I put in, and the great, 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 great people who follow gray, grizzled, and gaijin. But I'm on it more than 99% of the content creators that I engage. You have to be a consistent force on Twitter and social media to gain any measure of respect as a real person. Especially for those people who consistently go out of their way for you. Content creation is a very, very unique thing. I was watching a documentary about two months ago talking about cave paintings from some of our ancestors. These rather elementary depictions and pictographs of things and stars in the sky and animals. And it took literally thousands of years of time to pass before people saw what some dude worked really, really hard to make in that cave, likely before he got eaten, injured, or otherwise maimed to death. But he worked really hard, but he never saw the results. Artists too and musicians back in the day work really hard. Supreme genius that nobody recognizes. But now in modern times, people put their stuff out there and there is a built in audience to interact with other people's stuff. No, the opposite side is that everyone puts stuff out there. I've said it often about foreigners in Japan. You'd be lucky to meet two or three foreigners here who don't have YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, a blog, a YouTube channel, a Patreon, a GoFundMe, or even those who don't do that have some secret dream of becoming the next great novelist, writer, journalist, photographer. The list goes on. And that's all well and good to have great dreams, but you're not that special, as I often say in these videos. You have to really, really work hard to get people's attention. And it doesn't mean being annoying, and it doesn't mean touting yourself as the greatest thing since sliced bread. But you have to be confident in what you do and you have to be consistent in what you do and you have to make sure that people don't feel like they're being taken for a ride. And I think that's where people fail to get their core energized. I'm happy to be successful. I'm the first person to tell you I'd be, I would love in this universe, especially in this country, to be rich, successful, and famous. I make no apologies for that. I'm a smart dude, I'm a talented dude, and God bless me, I'm a super, super, super hardworking dude. And all of that gets me a job teaching English for the last 14 years coming up soon. And I'm okay with that. But of course I want to, quote, be more, end quote, as I talk about in much of my social media blogging and videos like this, as well as audio content. But I'm also interested 
in helping other foreigners. Somebody wrote today and they said, Craig, you should find a way to help a big, big problem in Japan. And if you solved that, you'd be really rich, famous, and respected. And I'd never really thought about that. Finding a problem that I could solve. Because I guess in much of my daily life, I don't really have, fortunately, any big problems. But I know, of course, many foreigners here do. And I think one of the big, 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 big problems that foreigners do face here is that they're just another foreigner. And I think people are always trying to reach for more. And whether that's Japan, Japanese society, a language barrier, a money barrier for many, or other commitments that make it impossible to really chase down one's true passions and dreams, there are always these kind of roadblocks. And on social media, I see a lot of roadblocks by people who just sit by and think that their like, retweet, comment, or review, kind again, doesn't make a difference to somebody. I have no ego, amazingly enough. I'm a really, really, really humble person. I'm a really, really nice and kind person. But I can tell you that I notice likes, retweets, and comments. And beyond anything that I gain on social media, it keeps me highly motivated to keep pushing forward towards that moment when perhaps I will be able to break the mold and, quote, be more on social media, end quote. So, if you are a Grey Grizzled and Gaijin social media super fan, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you kind of watch my stuff go by on Twitter or other social media platforms, please, 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 take a second, like, retweet, and kindly comment on my stuff. Just as a personal favor, from human being to human being. And for all of the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people that I retweet again and again and again on Craig Hoffman 11 on Twitter, take a moment of your day to brighten someone's life. You have no idea how dark and gloomy someone's life might be. I get emails all the time and direct messages. Thank you, thank you, thank you for liking, retweeting, and commenting kindly on my comment or reviewing something. It means much more to people than you might think it would. And if the shoe was on the other foot, I'm certain that you would hope that somebody would go out of their way, however small, stranger to stranger, to lift you up. Something to think about the next time that you're hanging out with a beer in your left hand or tea or coffee or a snack and watching my content on Grey Girls and Gaijin, my great, great, great engagers or a complete stranger. The choice is yours. The opportunity is there. That's it and have a great, great day.